Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Zoic Explains. Today I'm going to show you how to change your URLs so that they are shorter, so that you can improve SEO and traffic, and I'm going to show you how to prove that it's working along the way, experiment at first, prove it's working, and then roll it out to your entire site. So first, let's talk first about URLs and permalinks. So I'm inside of a WordPress website right now. Uh, the classic site of mine that we beat up on this show all the time, Injury Health Blog, you can see here, um, WordPress by default gives you multiple different uh, slugs, if you will, that you can start with for your URLs. And in many cases, website owners, when you first start your website, did not necessarily think about the structure of these URLs. And what we've learned over time is that generally shorter ones will perform better in search engines. But perhaps before unrolling this, you think it sounds complicated, you want to test this for yourself to ensure this is going to work. So first, if you are using WordPress, uh, one of the things that you may want to try is downloading a plugin called Custom Permalinks. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to test this whole process out. We're going to pick four or five popular posts that get traffic. Um, I can go inside of Google Search Console or look at my Google Analytics and find out landing pages that get organic search traffic so that we can actually objectively see if we're getting more traffic or not from this project. If I'm using WordPress, um, I can do this by downloading this plugin. So I can download it from their page and upload it here, or I can simply uh, install it right here. And once it's installed, I just want to activate it. And once it's activated, I can go into my posts now. So let's pretend this uh, tennis elbow post is the one that I would like to change. And the custom permalink tool is going to allow me now to go into this section here, which may have had my date mixed into it and a num uh, number of other factors. Um, and now I can actually clear it out and I can make it whatever I want at the end here. So I highly recommend simply removing any excess material from the URL. So uh, dates like 2018 or 2017, uh, months inside of the slug, uh, anything else other than basically your website.com slash the article. So once I have went ahead and made this change, I can go into my host or whatever plugin or file management system that you use to run redirects. Here I've got the Ezoic blog pulled up. And if I wanted to run a redirect here, I prefer to do it at my host. Uh, you can use plugins and different redirect tools inside of uh, CMS systems like WordPress or Joomla to do this. But it's actually better to do it at the host level because if a plugin ever goes out of date or breaks or something like that, you don't want to lose all of your redirects. So in our case, I had my um, redirect name, it can be whatever I want. Usually I use the, the slug. And so now I want to put in whatever the slug was before. So this is simply what it was before after .com. Now the new destination, all I need to do is take it for what it is now, which is in my case, minus the date and the month, and then boom, I'm done. So now I've redirected this across the entire website. My site's internal links should have been fixed, and I've got this redirect in place now that's gonna allow me to uh, redirect any referral traffic or anyone that's linked to that page uh, directly to my new URL. And these should all be 301 redirects. So now that I've went ahead and made those changes, um, it's time to start monitoring the change overall. So what I can do is go into Google Analytics and I can go to behavior and site content. Now I want to go to landing pages. So now I can see all my landing pages here, including um, some of the more popular ones that I may have changed my URL on. But I want to see after I've made this change, has it improved or not? And one of the things you'll notice here is that the URL itself has changed. So how do we want to measure this? So first, we want to make sure that we understand the date that we selected to make this change on. Once we know what date that is, let's pretend for my case, 
It is April 15th. So on April 15th, I made the change. So I want to just look at April 15th. I'll look at the first two weeks after. And then what we'll do is we'll also look at essentially two weeks before. So I'm going to go to custom here in my date range picker and I'm going to compare and I'm going to select custom and then this custom segment is actually go from the previous Monday through the existing one. So this gives us the exact same amount of time and I'm going to click apply. Now I can take my slug of whatever URL I'm experimenting with. So I just want to take the one without the date ranges and paste it into this search box here at the top. And it's going to show me two different versions of this. It will show me the one with the date and without because it's actually going to grab the slug no matter what. It's going to look at all the URLs that include this information. So I'll be able to see in this box right here if it has improved or not based on the fact that uh, I have went ahead and made these changes. So in my case, I can see if this was a real experiment that I was running, a 5% improvement would tell me perhaps this is working. And what you want to do is test this on five or six URLs. And if it's working well, you may want to make the change site wide. And you can track all this really easily in a spreadsheet like I have here. So what you can do is take the slug URL and what you want to do is after you run this report the first time, you may want to say, okay, one week ahead of time, one week after. And then here, if you just do the simple equals and then put the respective cells in parentheses, subtract them and then divide by the first one, what you're going to get is the percentage change, as you can see noted here. And actually, you don't have to write that each time. You can simply copy this from the spreadsheet and paste it into the other respective cell, and you will get exactly what you're looking for. And this spreadsheet will help you better understand the impact. In my case, you can see here with this experiment, a 20% improvement after changing the URL. Definitely worth it. So now I want to make this site change all the way across my site. I want to make all my URLs shorter. I'm done with my experiment. So now I no longer need my custom permalink plugin. I can actually disable it if I like. And I can go to my core permalink settings if I'm using WordPress. If you're not using WordPress, either way, this is going to sort of work the same way. So essentially, you'll have one of these other boxes checked if you're in WordPress. If not, you may just have simply written out someplace that this is how your new URLs are created. What you want to do is you're going to switch to just post name. If you're using WordPress. Now, that being said, now you need to redirect all those URLs. That seems like a huge pain in the butt if you're gonna do it the way that we did before. But actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we can use this custom structure button here. So previously, my URLs were year, month, and then post name. I'm gonna take that right there. I'm going to write a rule. So now when I go into redirect rule, I'm going to say all my URLs as the name. I'll select my name. And now I go source. And then on the front end here. And now we're going to do the same thing. Except now I'm just going to use post name. So now, what this rule is essentially saying is that it's going to take any URLs that finish with .com and then take anything that says slash year, month, and post name and change it to just the post name. So this is going to automatically redirect all my URLs for me from my longer version to my shorter version. And again, this is a common redirect, re, uh, rejects rule. If you're interested in any more of these, all you have to do is Google rejects rules. And you can see there's a lot of various rules that you can do and ways to match them. So if you have a complicated URL structure 
or maybe have specific URLs that need certain rules applied to them. There are a lot of really great syntaxes for this. So all you have to do is read up on this a little bit and you can go in and write specific rules for your site. But there's no need to redirect one by one as you go. So hopefully this has given you a good idea of how to test different URL experiments to see if shortening your URLs is actually gonna improve SEO or not. And if so, how to test that and how to make the change site-wide if it's worth it. This has been another episode of Ezoic Explains, and I'm Tyler Bishop. Hopefully this has helped you with your organic traffic. We'll catch you next time on Ezoic Explains.